So in this case, we have a batch reactor and it being a batch reactor, turning to our uh, balance equation, we know there's not gonna be any flow in or out of our system. So these terms will both be equal to zero. And then if we were looking at the rate um, or performing a mole balance on species A, we would do DNA DT, it's equivalent to, and we don't have any flow in or out of our system. And in this G minus C term, uh, I will let this be equivalent to the G sub A, the rate that A is being generated at. And this will be equal to a minus RAV because in the equation that I've drawn here, we are consuming A to produce products B and C. So um, this applies to both constant volume and constant pressure batch reactors. So what we will do is rearrange this equation to solve for minus RA or RA specifically. We get as minus RA is equal to one over V times DNA DT. And so this is our starting point for both uh, conditions that we're gonna be looking at. And so in the case that we have constant volume, and another way of saying this is that volume does not equal some function of time, volume is a constant. <laughs> If that is the case, then what we were able to do in this equation right here is move this term into the uh, derivative. And so what I mean by that is we would have minus, sorry, minus RA is equal to D, and then we're pulling in the one over V term. So D and A over V DT and Quite simply, what we know to be the definition of concentration, the number of moles per volume, this is just equal to dCa dt. And so this is the case with constant volume batch reactors. So it's very easy to solve. Uh, and it's usually the case because we're dealing with like metal containers that aren't really changing in volume. But in the case when we're working with constant pressure batch reactors, that's where the math gets a little bit more tricky and nuanced. So with the constant pressure scenario, what we can say definitively is that Na, the number of moles of A in your control volume, which in this case is our batch reactor, is equivalent to the concentration inside this reactor times the volume. And this always holds true. And so when we look at DNA dt, this is really equal to dCa times V dt. And because volume is uh, changing, what we have to do here is the product rule. And this means that this term is now equivalent to the first times the derivative of the second times second times plus, plus second times the derivative of the first. And so what we get out of it is this. So DNA DT is really equal to what we have here, DCA, or I'm sorry, CA times DV DT plus V times DCA DT. So now if we were interested in how uh, the rate of formation of A in our system is impacted by having a constant pressure process, uh, what we would say is that we have this one over V term, one over V times DNA DT, which we just evaluated to be CA times DV DT plus V times DCA DT. And so what you're gonna note here is how uh, essentially what we will end up with, and I'm sorry, this is going a little off the page, but what we have, is uh, CA over V times DV DT plus V over V DCA DT. This term goes to one. And what we have uh, here, if we look at how we have um, this term right here, this is actually equivalent to the CA times the derivative of the logarithm of volume with respect to time and then plus DCA DT. And so this is how, um, when we're dealing with a constant pressure process, we have a new uh, 
relationship between the rate of our reaction and the uh, parameters of our system. So we care now both uh, our rate uh, of reaction for species A is impacted not only by the concentration of A, but also the volume um, in this type of relationship.